Welcome to the EKG Guy, if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us, and welcome back if you're returning. So we've been going through our EKG coding reference guide that's now been uh, available online for free. So you can get access there. And what you need to do to get access is simply put this link into your search bar, enter your email here, okay? Then you'll click Submit. You'll check your email. So check email. You'll get a link and then click on the link and you'll have access here. Now we're going to be looking at WPW pattern. Okay, so that is, you may have heard of WPW syndrome. We're going to look at the pattern. So Wolf Parkinson white pattern. Okay, and the pattern meaning the EKG pattern that we see uh, when we are looking for this. Okay, now if you want access to more in depth um, in resources, you can go to our website www.ekg.md okay and there you can get access you'll see our course there uh, much more detail we have our books separate videos from all the hundreds that we have online there's at least 200 separate ones that are for the books and very comprehensive to take you from a beginner to advanced level so if you want that go ahead and uh, go to the site and check that out okay so let's get started so wolf parkinson white pattern or wpw pattern so what is the pattern that we expect okay so let's just write this pattern here so the ekg pattern that we expect to see is a short pr interval okay and when we're talking about adults it tends to be less than 120 milliseconds and children obviously it's a little different but this is kind of the main thing so the short pr interval you want to see slurring of the initial portion of the qrs complex and that's considered a delta wave so the second one would be a delta wave okay and this results in a prolongation of the qrs complex so an increase in the qrs duration and it tends to be at least 120 milliseconds wide okay uh, in adults that is and this wide QRS complex results from fusion of two electrical impulses one that's going through the uh, AV bypass track which we'll look at and one through the normal AV node and the last thing that I want to note before we look at why and how it appears on the EKG is that you'll have these secondary STT wave uh, abnormalities or changes okay you may see what we call discordance okay so that's one thing to look at so these are the you know the pattern that you see in this wpw okay and there's different types but we'll just go over the basics okay and the different types are based on where that accessory pathway is present so what's going on in this so let's look at the mechanism of it all right so here's your right atrium Here's your left atrium, your right ventricle, and your left ventricle. Okay, to review our conduction system, our sinus node is up here. Okay, we have these internodal pathways that come to an AV node. You may have a Bachmann bundle at the left side, a His bundle here, and then your right bundle branch. You have your left bundle branch, an anterior and posterior fascicle. So left anterior and left posterior fascicles. Okay. So we finished talking about conduction blocks uh, previously, but here we're, this is the normal pathway where you go from the sinus node and conduct from the atria to the ventricles. Okay. Now there are some cases where you have what's called an accessory pathway, and it can be from the right side to the left side. So again, what's normally connecting the atria to the ventricles is this normal conduction pathway we just drew. Okay. However, you may have what's called an AV bypass track. A for atria, V for ventricles, atrioventricular bypass tract. And you can see this tract is connecting the atria to the ventricles. You may also see it here on the left side as well, or elsewhere in the heart, okay? So it's just connecting, we call it an AV bypass tract. The one in WPW, this syndrome, is often referred to as the Kent bundle, okay? Or bundle of Kent. So it's connecting the atria to the ventricles. And I want you to imagine you have an impulse that's starting up here, conducting normally. It's gonna to conduct to the atria as well, depolarize the atria. And the atria, as they're being depolarized, they actually can conduct down this accessory pathway as well as down the AV node. But as you recall, there's that conduction delay here at the AV node. 
And if there's a delay there, that means it's likely going to go down this pathway first, okay, in this case. So imagine you have an impulse starting and it ends up coming down that bundle of Kent and starts to depolarize the ventricles, okay? And eventually the conduction down the AV node catches up to depolarize the ventricle. So imagine we have, let's just uh, erase some of this here so you can see this. So I'll erase here. We don't need this other bundle. So here we go. So we have our heart and we have this bypass tract, okay, that we're calling the Kent bundle. We have our tracks here, our internal pathway and the Bachman bundle. So conduction starting up here in the sinus node. Imagine we have a sinus node and what happens from that, it starts depolarizing the atria, okay, and is coming down to the AV node. So as a result of that, what do we get? Well, we get the first deflection of a P wave, okay? Now, normally, after that, there's that delay at the AV node, right? We have a delay here. So it comes to the AV node. However, there's also this bypass tract. So it starts to conduct down here sooner, and it actually reaches the ventricles before the normal conduction pathway. And as a result, it starts depolarizing the ventricles, but slower, okay? That's slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization outside the normal conduction pathway. As a result, you have a short PR interval because conduction is not delayed. It is still delayed at the AV node, but we have a bypass tract that starts depolarizing the ventricles early. So we get this slurring, and the slurring is a slow slope because of that slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization. Eventually, conduction comes down the ventricles and the normal conduction system catches up. And as a result, you have the end, the terminal portions of the QRS complex right, reflecting normal fast conduction, okay? And then repolarization. So P wave, because the atria are depolarized, notice you also have a short PR interval, okay? This is your PR interval because conduction into the ventricles is occurring earlier you have this delta wave here. So this is your delta wave. And because you're starting your QRS uh, complex early, you have also prolongation of your QRS interval. So from the beginning to the end, and you get an increase in the QRS duration. Okay, so short PR interval because ventricular depolarization starts earlier. You have the delta wave because of that slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization in the ventricles. And you have QRS complex that's widened because of that uh, increased or the initial depolarization wave now prolonging it. But remember, the terminal portion as the normal conduction system starts to catch up is fast. Okay, and that's why you have those sharp complexes. So if you look at this example here, Okay, so look at, we have these P waves that are here. Okay, these are P waves. And notice so you have a short PR interval. It's certainly less than 120 milliseconds. I believe it was about 90 milliseconds around that. And then you have that slurring. You can notice it more down here in lead two. Notice the slurring of the initial portion of that QRS complex. So here's your P wave. And you, it's almost catching up to your QRS. So it's short PR interval, delta wave, and notice the terminal portion of your QRS complex. Notice how it's sharp, okay, and then finishes. So you have that short PR interval, the delta wave, and the increase in the QRS duration, okay? The QRS here was just about 120, so just barely prolonged. So hopefully that makes sense. So the main things, short PR interval, delta wave, QRS duration is often, not always, but tends to be at least 120 milliseconds. Now, we talked about this last portion uh, where we can see these ST uh, and T wave abnormalities in which you have discordance. And what discordance means is that your main QRS uh, deflection going down, notice it's mostly negative here, so it's mostly down. And then you have this ST elevation and upright T wave. So they're going in the opposite direction. We don't typically see that. So that's what we mean by discordance, negative and then positive. Okay, not always seen, but something you should keep in mind. So again, short PR interval, delta wave, and prolonged QRS duration, okay? These are the main ones. 
So wolf parkinson white syndrome exists due, due to an abnormal muscular network in the conduction tissue between the atria and the ventricle, as we saw here. And remember, that's often called the Kent bundle. And it bypasses the AV node where you have that normal delay, okay? Now, most patients don't have structural heart disease, but the syndrome is more common in patients with Epstein's anomaly, in which you have anomalous attachment and downward displacement of the tricuspid valve. Remember, the tricuspid valve is here on the right side, okay? The right side between the right atrium and the right ventricle sits here, this tricuspid valve. So you can also see it in mitral valve prolapse. Remember, it's not always on the right side. You may have one on the left side, and there's ways on the EKG we can tell where it's coming from, okay? In this case, notice that the big deflection in V1, okay, is going away from these leads. So it's likely coming, going away from V1 from the right side and then going posteriorly, okay? And the same thing is true. You can tell with lead two, which sits here, okay, it's likely going leftward and posteriorly uh, and likely a right-sided pathway. But that's a little more advanced and not meant for here. Obviously, in our course, we go through that. So the main things here you have to also note, mitral valve prolapse, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So anything that can affect the heart, you can get these. Now, most tachyarrhythmias result from an AV reentry tachycardia and can lead to symptomatic narrow complex tachycardia. Now, a real concern exists when a patient has atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter and then has this bypass track in which there can be retrograde conduction back up the AV node, resulting in a rapid, wide complex, irregular tachycardia that can be life-threatening, okay? In other words, if we just erase this here. So we just talked about what was happening in sinus rhythm, okay? And what we would normally see, but in some cases, patients have atrial fibrillation. You can imagine you have the bypass track here, your AV node here, and then you have someone with atrial fibrillation. So they're firing at random places coming down, and you can imagine it coming back and having this reentrant pathway. Okay, the same thing could be where it goes the other way, but it's obviously worse if we can have this going in circles, okay? And that's that can be potentially life-threatening, so something to keep in mind, okay? All right, so the main things you have to note, the delta wave that we mentioned was that slurring of the initial QRS complex secondary to ventricular pre-excitation, as we saw from that bypass track, the accessory pathway. Uh, the clinical significance, now this is potentially life-threatening, but there's a small risk of sudden cardiac death with these patients. We talked about the discordance, the opposite changes in the ST T wave uh, segments, okay? And the other thing that I wanted to note is that the syndrome, so we're talking about the pattern, the syndrome is from a congenital accessory pathway, meaning you're born with it, having these characteristic features that we described here, and then paroxysmal tachyarrhythmias, okay? So if you have no tachyarrhythmias, we tend to call it a WPW pattern. But it's the syndrome that we really are concerned about, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. This is an accessory pathway that we're seeing, and that's why you have that delta wave, and that's what widens that QRS complex. Okay, so again, EKG pattern here we mentioned, short PR interval, delta wave, prolonged QRS interval, and sometimes these uh, STT wave abnormalities. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay. So completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay. These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide. 
uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.